everybody, so in this video we are going to be covering an introduction to decimals, decimals addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, repeating and terminating decimals, and numerous working examples. So let's get started. Alright, now let's move on to decimals. So a decimal is simply just a fraction whose denominator is a power of 10 and whose numerator is expressed by figures placed to the right of a decimal point. So here is an example. Say we wanted to convert the decimal 0.1 into a fraction. Well, the, the fraction version of 0.1 is simply just 1 over 10. And the reason this is, is as you can see, 1 here is the numinator, and as stated in the explanation above, the numinator is expressed by the figures placed to the right of the decimal point. As you can see, 1 is placed to the right of this decimal point. And the reason why the denominator is 10 is because the denominator has to be a power of 10. And as you can see, this 1 is placed one space away from the decimal, which means that it is 1 tenth. Now say if this 1 was placed two spaces away from the decimal, say if we were doing the fraction 0 0.01, then the fraction version of this would be 1 over 100, since it is two spaces away from the decimal point. Alright, so now let's move on to another example right over here on the left. So in this example, we are turning the decimal 2.25 into a fraction. So how do we know how to convert this? So here's the first step. So the fraction is 2.25. So we put 225 as the numerator. Now we see how many spaces the last figure of 225 is behind the decimal. So the last figure of 225 is 5, and it is 2 spaces away from the decimal point. And what that means is that the denominator would then be 100. So the answer would be 225 over 1. All right, now let's go on to decimal addition. So there are two main steps to whenever you're adding two decimals together. So the first is to align the decimal points up. So if you look at this example up over here, if you look at it closely, you can see that for both numbers, the decimal spots are in the exact same place. So after that, you simply just add it as normal and maintain the decimal points position. So one thing to note is that this number is actually equivalent to 1.50. You can add as many zeros to the back of a number behind the decimal point. It won't make a difference. So 225 plus 150 is simply just 375. And then after we find the number 375, we simply just add the decimal point and maintain the decimal point's position from the other two numbers. So in this case, the, in this case, the decimal point would be right over here, in the same place as it was with the numbers that you're adding together. Okay, so now let's do another example. So let's just choose some random decimals. Let's do 4.15, and then we add it to... And then we add it to 7.3. So there's two steps in order to add decimals. The first is to align the decimal points up. So let's do that right now, 4.15. We add it to 7.3. So now the decimal points are all aligned. Now all that's left to do is just add these numbers as normal, and then maintain the decimal points position at, right at the end. So let's just forget about the decimal point, just add it. So this would be 5, 4, then 11. So we have 1,145. And now all this have to do is just put the decimal from where it was in these first two numbers. That would be right 
about here. So the answer would be 11.45. All right, that's it for decimal addition. Let's move on to decimal subtraction. So decimal addition and decimal subtraction are mainly the same. The first steps in both of them are the same. Align the decimal points up, align the decimal points up. But in the second step, it's different. For decimal addition, you have to add as normal, but for decimal subtraction, you have to subtract. That's the only difference between them. So if you look at this example over here, it follows all of the steps. These two decimals are aligned and they're exactly on top of each other. And the answer maintains the decimal point position. So now let's do another example. Let's use these two numbers, 11.45, and then let's subtract it by 7.3. So the first step is to align the decimal points up exactly on top of each other. So let's do that right now. 11.45, subtract it by 7.3. So now it's aligned. Now all that's left to do is just subtract it as normal, and then afterwards you have to maintain the decimal points position. So this would be five, this would be one, and this would be four. So we have 415. So now the last step in order to complete this problem, we simply just have to maintain the decimal points position. So that would mean that the decimal point would be right about here. All right, so now let's move on to decimal multiplication. So decimal multiplication is a three-step process. The first is to simply just multiply it like a whole number, like if there weren't any decimals in the first place. And then the second is to count the decimal places in the problem. And then the last step is to put the same number of places that you just counted behind the decimal in the product. So here is an example of decimal multiplication. So in this example, we are multiplying the decimal 2.2 to 1.1, to 1 .1, sorry. So the first step is to multiply it as if it was a whole number. That would be the multiplication 22 times 11. Now, if you multiply 22 times 11, you would get the number 242. Now, the second step is to count the decimal places in this problem. So as you can see, let's first do it here. This is one decimal place, and this is now also one decimal places, so that's two decimal places in total. So now, now that we have counted our decimal places, we have to put that same number of decimal places behind the decimal in the product. So our number here is 242, and our last step is to simply just put the same number of places behind this decimal. That would be one and two. There are two places that would mean that the decimal would be right there. So the answer to this problem would be 2.42. All right, so now let's do another decimal multiplication problem. Let's multiply the decimals 4.15 to 7.3. So the first step in solving this problem is to multiply it as if it were a whole number, to completely just forget about the decimals until the end. So that would be 415 multiplied by 73. So we just have to multiply these two numbers together then worry about the decimals later. So this would be 5, 4, 3, That would be 29. Now we just add them together. Okay, so now we have our number. It is 30,297. So now that we have 
all the multiplication out of the way, we just have to worry about the decimals now. So the second step is to count the decimals in the problem. Let's use this red pen. So for 4.15, there is two decimal places, and for 7.3, there is one. So that in total would be three decimal places. So we just add three decimal places to this problem. That would be one, two, three. That's where we put the decimal. So our answer would be 30.295. All right, that's it for decimal multiplication. Let's move on to decimal division. So, there are, so decimal division is actually a four-step process. So the first step is to write the problem in a traditional long division style. Just write it as you normally would. And the second is to move the decimal point in the divisor to the far right of the divisor. Let's do it here. This is the divisor. Let's move this decimal point to the far right of the divisor. So this number is now 13 instead of 1.3. Now our third step is to move the decimal point the same number of places that we did in the divisor to the dividend. So this here is the dividend. We move it the same amount of places as we did in the divisor, which is one. Then after we have our new and improved equation, we just divide it as usual. So we divide 65 by 13. That would equate to five. Okay, so now let's move on to another decimal division problem. So let's say divide 14.4 by 1.2. So the first step in solving this is to simply just write the problem in a traditional long division style. So let's do that right now. 14.4 as the dividend and 1.2 as the divisor. Now let's do our second step. Move the decimal point in the divisor so the far, to the far right of the divisor. So this is the divisor over here. Let's move the decimal point to the far right of the divisor. So now that's now 12. Now let's do this third step. Move the decimal point the same number of places that you did in the divisor to the dividend. So we moved one place in the divisor, so we also have to move one place in the dividend. So our new and improved equation is 144 divided by 12. And if you solve this, this would be 12. 12 would be the answer if you divided 14.4 by 1.2. All right, so now let's move on to the term repeating decimal. So now I'll just go over this term. So a repeating decimal is just a decimal fraction in which a figure or group of figures is repeated indefinitely. And decimals that don't repeat forever are called terminating decimals or finite decimals. So here are some examples. So some examples of repeating decimals would be 0.33333 and repeating forever. And another would be 0.666666 and repeating forever. Another way to write these decimals is writing 0.3 and then a line on top of it. That means that 3 repeats forever. Now if we do the same for 0.6666 and repeating forever, it would be 0.6 with a line on top of it to mean that 6 repeats indefinitely. So here are some examples of terminating decimals. And terminating decimals, it just means that a decimal that doesn't repeat forever, such as 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and etc. Alright, so now let's do an example. So what do you do if you were asked to turn this decimal into a fraction? So this is how. So say that x, say that x is equal to 
repeating. Now if you now if you multiply both sides by 10, multiply both sides by 10, you would get 10x and 3.3 repeating indefinitely. And now our next step is to subs is to subtract both of these sides by x. Subtract this side by x and this side by x. And remember that x is equal to 0.3 repeating. So this would be, if you subtracted 10x by x, this would be 9x. And if you subtracted 3.3 repeating by 3 repeating, you would simply just get 3. So now the equation that we're left with is 9 is equal to, 9x, sorry, is equal to 3. And if we take 9 on the other side, we would get x is equal to 3 over 9. Okay, so that's how you convert a repeating decimal into a fraction. All right, so now let's go over some working examples. All right, so now let's do question number one. So compute 0.45 divided by 0.09. So remember, for whenever you're doing division, there is four steps. The first is to put this into long division form. So we put point 45 as the, div as the dividend and then point 0 0.09 as the divisor. And then the next step is to move the decimal point of the divisors to the far right. Let's do that right now. So the divisor is 0 0.09. Let's move this all the way to the right. So we moved it two places. Now we move the exact same number of places to the dividend. Now we move this two places. So our new and improved equation is now 9, is now 45 divided by 9, which is five. So our answer is five. All right, now let's do question number two. So compute 0 0.03 to the power four. So as we've discussed earlier, 0 0.03 can also be written as 3 over a hundred. So this problem can also be written as 3 over a hundred to the power 4. So 3 to the power 4 can also be written as 81. And 100 to the power 4 simplified can also be written as 8, 10 to the power 8. So now all that's up to do is just put this in decimal form. So the denominator is 10 to the power 8, so this is our decimal symbol, and we go down 8 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So at the very end, we put 81, and then we just fill the rest up with zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, zeros. So our answer would be 0. 0.000. 0081. All right, so now let's move on to question number three. So compute 45.5 divided by 10,000. So let's write that 45.5 divided by 10,000. So now, in one way to solve this is to just write 45.5, and then move the decimal, and then move the decimal 
four places back since this is 10,000 and 10 and 10,000 is equal to 10 to the power 4. So we just have to move this decimal four places back. One, two, three, four. So we put zero and zero. So that would mean that the answer is 0 0.00455. All right, so now let's move on to question number four. So compute 0 0.003 times 0 0.0004. So let's just write this down. 0 0.003 multiplied by 0 0.0004. So remember that the first step in decimal multiplication is just to multiply it as if it were whole numbers. So let's just do that right now. So 3 times 4, that is 12. Now the next step is to count the places in this problem. Let's first do 0 0.003, so that's 1, 2, 3. That's 3 places. Let's do this. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 4 places. And 3 plus 4 is 7, so that's 7 places in total. So now all that's left to do is just add the places to 12. So do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is where the decimal point should go. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, four five zeros so our final number is point zero 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 twelve that is our final answer okay now let's do question number five right one point two five as a fraction so write one point two five over here so now let's remember these steps. So let's first do the numerator. So we just write 125 as the numerator. Now we figure out the denominator. So how you do this is just see how many places are behind the decimal. See one, two places behind the decimal. So that's 100. That means that the that means that the denominator is 100. So if we simplify this by 5, this would be 25, this would be 20, this would be 5, and 4. So simplified, this would be 5 over 4. All right, let's do question number 6. So express the reciprocal of 2.4 as a fraction. So a reciprocal, a reciprocal is just 1 over a number. So say the reciprocal of 2 would simply just be 1 over 2. So 1 over the number that you're turning into a reciprocal. So the, therefore the reciprocal of 2.4 would simply just be 1 over 2.4. So now we just simplify this. So let's take away the decimal. Let's move this down one place. And if we do something to the denominator, we have to do that same thing to the numerator. We also have to move this down a place. So our new and improved equation is now 10 over 24, simplified 5 over 12. So the reciprocal of 2.4 as a fraction is 5 over 12. All right, now let's move on to question seven. Write the following fraction as a repeat decimal. So this is, the fraction is one over three. So now all that's left to do is just to divide one by three. So we do this and we just divide one by three and whatever repeat and whatever repeat decimal that comes out is our answer. So, we put a decimal here, this goes as 10, then we put 3, 9, 1, so 
That means that our repeat decimals is 0.3333 and continuing indefinitely. Or just simply 0.3 with a line on top of it. Alright, now let's move on to question number 8. So convert 0.2 repeating into the simplest form of fraction. So we actually did one of these questions before, and we're just going to use the same technique again. So we're just going to convert 0.2 repeating into a fraction. So the first step is to say that x is equal to 0.2 repeating. That's the first step. And then, after we have x is equal to 0.2 repeating, we have to multiply both sides by 10. Multiply both sides by 10. After doing that, we would reach this side to be 10x and, okay, wrong color, this side to be 10x and this side to be 2.2 repeating. And now that we've done that, the last thing to do is just subtract both of these sides by x. Subtract both of these sides by x. And remember that x over here is equal to 0.2 repeating. So 10x subtracted by x would simply just be 9x, and 2.2 repeating subtracted by 0.2 repeating would simply just be 2. So our new equation would be 9x is equal to 2. And if we put 9 on the other side, it, this could also be simplified to x is equal to 2 over 9. Okay, now let's move on to our next problem. Convert. Okay, this problem, I forgot to add the repeat sign over this, so now this is correct. Convert 0.51 repeating into the simplest form of fraction. So we've already done two of these problems before, we're just going to use the same method to solve this one as well. So, we have, we're trying to convert 0.51 into a fraction. So 0.51 repeating, sorry. So now the first step to do is just to say x is equal to 0.51 repeating. That's the first step. And then the next step is to multiply both sides by 100. And if you're wondering why we're multiplying both sides by 100 instead of 10, that is because there are two digits, there are two places behind the decimal point instead of 1. So x multiplied by 100 would simply just be 100x. 0.51 multiplied by 100 would simply just be... 51.51 repeating. Now the next step is to subtract both of these sides by x. Subtract both of these sides by x. And remember that x in this equation is equal to 0.51 repeating. So if you wanted to subtract 100x by x, that would simply just be 99x. And 99x is equal to 51.51 repeating subtracted by 0.51 repeating because x is equal to 0.51 repeating and that would simply just equal 51. So our equation would be 99x is equal to 51. Now if you wrote this in a different way this could also be that x is equal to 51 over 99, if you took 99 on the other side. Now simplified, this would be 17 over 33, if you divide both sides by 3. So, if you converted 0.51 repeating into the simplest form of fraction, you would get 17 over 33 as your answer. Alright, let's move on to question number 10, our final question. So, compute 
six over point three and then add that to point three over point zero zero six. So let's write that down six over point three, then add it to point three over point zero six. So the first thing to do is to do, is to get rid of the decimals altogether. Let's first do this fraction first. So in order to get rid of the decimals on the, both the numerator on, on both the numerator and the denominator, you have to first go back one place with the denominator, and then whatever you do to the denominator, you also have to do to the numerator. So we have to add one place back as well. That makes this 60. And we do the same thing to the other fraction. So in order to have no decimals in this problem at all, we have to move this back two places. And then we also have to move this back two places. That becomes 30. So now our new and improved equation is 60 over 3. And then we add that to 30 over 6. So now all that's have to do is just add these up. So both of these fractions are improper fractions. So we can convert this fraction to the number 20, and we can convert this fraction to the number 5. And 20 plus 5 is equal to 25. So 6 over 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 over 0 0.06 is equal to the number 25. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, remember to drop a like and subscribe. Hope to see you in my next video. Bye!